All right, guys, welcome to another really exciting video here. Um, I have the pleasure to be with uh, Dr. Jason Hill today, and we're going to actually just sit down and have a chat. I want to specifically talk about the um, Hill GT50 turbine engine and why Jason decided to do something absolutely crazy. So Jason, thanks for being with us here today. Thanks, Misha. Now, the first question that everybody's going to always ask, Jason, why on earth would you decide to build your own engine for this helicopter? What was the inspiration? What point did you have to come to um, in this project before you said, you know what, I think I have to build my own engine? It's a, it's a very good question. I mean, it wasn't inspiration, it was desperation. Um, when, you, when you start out to design a, a new helicopter, you start with the, uh, the goal of what you want the helicopter to be, how many people you want to carry, what the payload needs to be, how fast you want to fly, um, and, and the, the basic per performance parameters that start the, the whole process. And then that comes out with a power requirement and a duty requirement. And then traditionally, manufacturers would have gone and looked for an off-the-shelf engine. Now, when we did that, we just we found that we just no matter how we did it we couldn't make uh, a helicopter that met our specifications by taking a, an engine off the shelf so we started with looking at can we can we do this as simply as possible can we take an, an existing piston engine can we take an existing turbine engine can we look at some of these novel diesels we looked at all sorts of things automotive conversions even some crazy uh, technology that was developed just before the, the dawn of the jet age some of the very early diesel engines we looked at all of that stuff and nothing works for this application you can't ever get to the point where you can design a, uh, a, 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 a you, you can't ever allow the helicopter to be the best that it can be when you're working within those constraints. So both from a, a performance and from a price point uh, perspective, we had no choice but to, to develop our own engine. And the, the thing that, that people don't realize is that these, these little turbine engines are actually not that complicated. I mean, they're nowhere near as complicated as a, a model automotive engine, for example. Uh, and so for, for a company with the right stuff, it's actually not that much of a, a big deal to develop a, a new simple turbine engine. So for us, it was a no brainer. If you want to make the best five seater helicopter in the world, you've got to give it the right power and you've got to give it the right engine. Now you say it's not that difficult for a team that has the right stuff. What do you mean by that? So can you explain a little bit, two, two questions, I guess, in one. So how long has it been now that you guys have been working on the development of this engine? And, um, and then what kind of uh, expertise would, would you say has gone into this project? So we started uh, configuring uh, the helicopter, so HX50 as people know it today, back in about 2015. Uh, and it, it started out as a four-seater with a, with a uh, intended to have a piston engine and it, it grew and grew and grew. And it, by the end of sort of 2016, we knew that we weren't going to be able to design the, the aircraft the way we want with an existing engine. And so in early 2017, we did a feasibility study on the, the performance and the manufacturing costs of developing the, the GT50 engine. And that all of that exceeded our expectations. It was much cheaper than we thought it was going to be to, to manufacture the, the components. Uh, the development uh, project was viable for us uh, and the performance was exactly what we wanted. So we started seriously in 2017 and uh, the program's been been ongoing since since then, right up to the point now where we have a, a very established detailed design for the engine and we're about ready to start building the, uh, the, the core turbo machinery elements. Okay, so, but what kind of experience, you know, like, are you a turbine manufacturer? What kind of experience do you have to actually build an engine? Well, in terms of, you, you have to look at this realistically. Um, a helicopter manufacturer isn't going to spend the next 30 years consistently designing new turbine engines. Uh, you go and get the expertise you need in the quantities you need it. Now, our our team uh, are a, a, turbo, a group of turbo machinery specialists that work all across the industry for lots of different manufacturers. Uh, and they bring experience from the very latest aerospace gas turbine engines, the very, uh, the very largest industrial gas turbine engines, the turbocharger sector, and loads of process equipment as well. You know, compressors and turbines and combustors don't just get used in turbine engines, they get used all over the place. And there's a huge amount of expertise out there to develop those things to a, a far higher standard than we were capable of doing back in the 1950s. 
Uh, and so our team is really drawn from the the body of people that make up the the expertise and the uh, the, the gurus that all of the industry draws on. So we've got people that are ex Rolls Royce, ex European gas turbines, ex Siemens Siemens gas turbines. Uh, a lot of guys from the the turbocharger sector as well, uh, and a lot of people that are a sort of joint engine and uh, and gearbox specialists as well that support on the rotor dynamics and the mechanicals of the engine. So these guys are very much the the best of the best drawn from uh, around the world. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, so there's a lot of expertise that are going into this. I like that. And um, now, in your British way, you like to call this almost a, a greatest hits album of, uh, yeah. of an engine. Why? Why would you say that? What do you do? You have any? Is there any track record on this engine or an engine like it? Or you know, why would you call it the greatest hits album? So it, it's very it's very easy for people to look at HX50 and when they see GT50 to look at that and think, oh my word, this is all new. They're never going to be able to get this to, to, to work anytime soon. Uh, and the, the thing that most people won't realize yet is that this isn't all new. This is a collection of proven technologies, both in terms of the aircraft and the engine, that we very cleverly pulled together into a package that fully meets the requirements of the market. We understand exactly what the market wants, and we've brought together a load of proven technologies uh, that deliver those requirements to the market. So the reason I refer to both the helicopter and the uh, the engine as the, the greatest hits is because essentially we've just pulled the best bits from a load of proven uh, engines, a load of proven technologies, a load of proven manufacturing processes. So the compressor, for example, is a very close relative of something that's been in service for, for many years. It's a little bit smaller and it spins a little bit faster, but the geometry is very, very, very similar. Uh, the combustion technology, well, you'd see can can based combustors on frank engine from the uh, the dawn of the gas turbine age they didn't carry on in aerospace engines because most aerospace ga gas turbines get used in airplanes where a very small frontal area is important we don't care about that in an engine what we care about is ease of maintenance long life low cost lightweight um, and, a, and a bunch of other things that we, we have the freedom to uh, to exploit so we've gone back to can combustors because they're very cheap to make they're very cheap to develop they're very robust they're fuel flexible they're ideal the only thing they don't suit is if you want to fly really fast in a in an airplane you need the smallest frontal area so we've, we've got a proven uh, technology for the compressor we've got proven technology for the combustors and then of course axial axial turbines have been done to death everywhere they they get used in turbochargers they get used in existing aero engines they get used in industrial turbines they get used as process expanders they are everywhere so they're a very very uh, mature technology and the key to designing a, a good turbine uh, blisk is really being able to position the loading of the the engine so it suits where you can get great efficiency out of the component and by relaxing some of the constraints that you have when you're trying to design an engine that's got to be both a turbo prop and a turbo shaft by just focusing on the helicopter application we can make it really easy for ourselves to design a, an effective turbine for both the gas generator and the the free power turbine Right. So it's very much a greatest hits album because it pulls in the best from existing aerospace uh, turboshaft engines, the best bits of industrial turboshaft engines, the best bits of turbocharger technology, and then it really benefits from uh, the massive progress that's been made in manufacturing processes since the, the last generation of engines were, uh, were developed. Okay, and um, you, you're saying that this engine is actually a simpler engine and it's more redundant. Why would you say that? Well, it's it's simpler because the mechanical layout is very, very simple. So okay. uh, a lot of the existing aerospace engines use concentric shafts. And if you use concentric shafts so that you've got a gas generator and a free power turbine on separate bearings, then by the time you've run the shafts through each other and you've got complicated bearing arrangements, complicated arrangements to lubricate those and complicated packing airflows to keep them keep them cool you end up with a very a, a turbine should be inherently simple but it's very easy to design mechanical complexity into it and a lot of the traditional engines uh, have got bonkers gas paths where the engines come in at the front go down to the bath come for 
forward again, up out through the middle and various other things. You want the simplest flow of gas around the engine as possible. You want the simplest mechanical layout as possible. So fundamentally, we've got a rear power takeoff so that we can simplify the mechanical layout. We've got a nice straightforward gas path through the engine. And then some of the things that we've done is we've 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 eliminated features from the engine. So whereas uh, some of the earlier engines had a uh, quite a complicated and ac uh, accessory gearbox on the front of the engine to drive oil pumps and various other things and the starter generator drives through it, we've eliminated that gearbox and we've got what we call a, a pancake starter generator that's directly. Uh, mounted to the uh, compressor turbine shaft. So that's hugely simpler than, than what's gone before. We've got no strange spline bevel drives coming off the, the compressor turbine shaft. It's a very simple arrangement. And then what we've also done is we've, we've opted for a, a more electric approach to the engine with one eye on the future and hybrid powertrains and things like that. Um, so a lot of the accessories are electrically driven. Now that gives us the freedom to position them around the engine where they're required, not where you have to put them to drive them mechanically. So we have a much simpler plumbing arrangement around the engine. We have a much simpler uh, mounting arrangement for these uh, accessories and driving arrangement for these accessories. So it just makes the, the mechanical design a lot simpler, a lot easier to make, a lot cheaper to make and uh, much more up to date. Very nice. Yeah. And uh, you have a three burner can system on the back as well. So you have three flames burning instead of one, which is a kind of a triple redundancy thing. Now, can you just spend just a, a couple minutes describing your engine? So, um, you know, we know that it has a dual um, hill FADEC on it. Um, and then could you just uh, describe the mechanics, um, maybe the, the, the metals that you're going to be using? Are you going to be using, um, you know, different types of metals than other um, engines would have in them? Or how is that going to look? No, I mean, the materials are what they are, really. Um, you're, you're, you're up a corner in terms of materials in gas turbine engines because the the duty cycle for the engine is so demanding, the temperatures are so demanding. So uh, up front, we've got a, a single stage centrifugal compressor, which is manufactured from the very highest grade of, of aerospace titanium. Uh, and that's a, a, a machined from uh, a single piece uh, forged lump of, of stock on a, a five axis CNC machine. Then as you move back through the engine, we've got sta uh, stator blisks and rotating blisks as well. So we've got stationary and rotating blades and they're all made out of, uh, uh, the, the material we're using is actually a, a, a first generation single crystal super alloy, but it's not cast as a single crystal, it's equiaxed. So it's a, a nickel based super alloy, very, very, very high performance. Um, it's used increasingly these days in very high performance turbochargers and it's used extensively in the gas turbine business both for aero engines and for uh, uh, for industrial engines. Now, you're not quite into the realm where you're using the same materials that the very big gas turbine engines uh, use because you just don't get the benefit from them in uh, in these sorts of engines with uncooled uncooled blades. So uh, yeah, the, there's super alloys, there's titaniums, there's lots of stainless steel, and then there's various alloy bits in the cooler parts of the, the engine just to try and keep the, the weight of the whole thing down. So it's fairly conventional, but it's bang up to date. Okay, amazing. And um, so then I guess just the last question, we're going to kind of wrap it up here. What kind of performance are you going to get out of this engine? So the, the performance uh, for, for the engine is designed absolutely around the requirements for, for HX50. So the engine can produce 400 horsepower uh, max continuous, and that is the rating that it is designed to produce all the time. So that you'll get your full service life, you'll get your full TBO if you pull max continuous all the time. And it'll deliver max continuous all the way up to uh, 10,000 feet on an ISA plus 15 day. You've then got a five minute uh, takeoff rating. So for two times an hour, you can use 440 horsepower. So it gives you a 10% delta to, to sort of take off and land in confined areas and things like that. Um, and then we also have a 30 second emergency rating, which is again built into the duty cycle. So if you end up over pulling slightly, you don't require maintenance attention and things like that. And so on two occasions every hour, you can use the full 500 horsepower for 30 seconds a time. So those are the ratings. Everything up to the, the 500 horsepower is available at 10,000 feet on a ISA plus 15 day. So the, the intention here is no matter how heavily loaded the helicopter is all the way up to gross weight all the way up to 10,000 feet on a plus 15 day, you will never run out of power. Uh, and that's one of the major advantages 
of doing your own engine. You can set the requirements and then you can deliver the requirements. It's not, this is what I want. And then we go to the engine shop and they can't quite give me that. So they give me a pair of trousers. The, the waist's too tight and the legs are too short, but they're pretty reliable. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jason, yeah. I just saw I just saw recently, I don't think I should mention this, but I will. I just saw recently a photo of last Christmas's um, Christmas photo. <laughs> In you in a jumper that was just a little bit too tight. Your, your wife yeah. may have sent this the, over. The pro yeah, the, the problem I have is I spend far too much time in the office behind a computer designing stuff. I need to get out and do some running like you. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason, I, the reason I bring that up is because that's the last thing I just want to touch on is because, you know, that's beautiful. Every engine out there right now that's stuck on a helicopter has not been specifically designed for the helicopter. You mentioned it earlier um, when we were talking, but you know that's that's the beautiful thing about when you're designing a project from the ground up like this with a clean slate, you get to make these kind of choices and you get to design an engine that's exactly designed for your helicopter, right? There's three major, you, you, you tell me this, there's three major elements that go into a great groundbreaking helicopter. One is the right airframe, exterior and interior. The second one is the heart of the aircraft, right? The power plant to be able to drive the, uh, the helicopter and give it the specs and performance you want. And then the third one is the avionics suite. And we'll talk about that another time. That's kind of the brains behind the whole thing. So um, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're super busy um, taking the time to talk with me about this, describe the engine a little bit. I know everybody here is going to be just super excited about it. Um, and if you guys want to have more information um, about the helicopter, about the engine, about any of that kind of stuff, you can visit hillhelicopters.com. And uh, we're going to talk to you guys on the next video. Thanks again, Jason, for taking the time. Thanks, Misha. Speak to you soon.